Hello everyone, my name is Barbara and I'm Polish Girl Holist in Ireland and Likes Knit and today we have a kind of special video, a short one, just to update you and pour my feelings in regards Woolen in Dublin 2018. We are just back and as you can see I still hold some wristbands. So one states that I had an entry for a day. I went on to Woolen on Saturday and we have still Saturday. And the second one states that I attended an amazing class. Okay, so first things first. The opening was at 10 a.m. and we've decided not to rush and we arrived just before 11 o'clock. I haven't experienced any queues or anything like that. I printed my ticket, that what I was a recommendation when I bought it. I received those two um, wristbands. I entered um, a hall which was um, two thirds filled with booths and one third was a sitting area um, ish round the tables with chairs and some uh, coffee place that you could get coffee something to eat and the queue was long over there anyway so first things first what i decided i decided not to open my wallet and go through all the boots the website shows you the actual position of certain um yarn dyers or bag makers or whoever went there and showed their product well i wanted to keep it as a surprise for myself and i haven't really checked but it started yesterday I had a sneak peek um, of certain books uh, on Instagram because I'm following a few people and they were sharing what they have available during that yarn event. So I decided to walk around, say hi to those who I know and who know me so I feel a little bit more comfortable because uh, I was going there on my own. Seb just basically gave me a lift, he dropped me there and he took his time in Dublin and I stayed over there. So I decided to go on my own, just have a peek and look around without buying anything. So maybe over here I have a bit of a footage, I didn't want to put my camera into someone's faces. So you could actually see a few things, few booths that I really liked and I was brave enough to ask for permission. <laughs> Probably it wouldn't be anything bad, me just taking camera and filming, but I feel a little bit uncomfortable. So if you're a yarn seller and you see me somewhere, just tell me, Barbara, it's okay, you can film uh, or record. But not only that was available, you could have a yarn you could have super wash yarns, speckled yarn, toned yarns, you could have natural yarns. There was also amazing bag makers over there, which I almost was tempted to buy a few, but budget. Overall, it wasn't crowded, it was really nice atmosphere. Uh, after a first round, I decided to sit and calm down a bit and rationally decide what I want to get and what I want to do. So anyway, during the first stop, I decided that um, I want to get a yarn that I've never knitted before, so kind of have an interesting color or an interesting blend. And one of those two, I decided to go with the interesting blend. So after the first round, and what I've noticed, the most expensive one was the blend with the yak. Well, I have a blend and I'm actually knitting a hat for Sebastian, uh, amazing Martin's lab. I got a skein in Edinburgh, so I'm knitting with Yak. So I decided, well, um, not not today. <laughs> While I was walking, the two booths kind of draw my attention. So here is the one, which is Martin's lab. In Martin's labs, I noticed an amazing blend, which I actually got, and you probably want to see, do you? At uh, this yarn, and the blend is 50% alpaca, 25% silk and 25% linen. I've never knitted with linen and I had a time to go around and actually touch a linen, just 100% linen skein. It's like a wire. It's not even string. For me it's like a wire. So I'm not there yet to test a linen overall, which I'm tempted to, maybe I will one day, but I wanted to do something you know, that I will enjoy and I will actually have something knitted for me. So the first thing I thought it's, you know, I want to knit a garment for myself and especially that I attended some amazing class. But wait a sec. So that's why I got this yarn. The second thing that drawn attention was this amazing color. Um, I was drawn towards purple, but this with that fluff going around um, is just something I fell in love with. Martin had only three skeins. So you can see it over here. 
how amazing it looks. The texture of it is completely different. It does not have a linen uh, feeling. Uh, it has a mixture of alpaca feeling with a little bit of wool, let's say that way. But do you see the color? Amazing. So just to show you on the screen, I'll take the second one. Here it's a lino, that's how it says. 50% alpaca, 25%, 25% linen, 400 meters, which is 437 yards per 100 gram. Bill Bilberry stains? That's how you say it. I hope I'm not butchering anything, but you have it on the screen, you know how to read it. So did I say it right or wrong? Don't you think it's amazing? So it's not like 100% alpaca, which I adore, <laughs> but it's kind of have the same uh, texture. The only, uh, also the other thing that drawn me towards this yarn, and I would not say that that garment that was hanging in the booth was knitted with it, <laughs> with this yarn, was too rushed, I would say myself, not for by anyone, to ask what the pattern is, but I presume it's one of the Yusna Lorkowska's, so Martin's wife patterns. I can definitely look it up and know which one it is. And especially this probably was knitted with it, I will find it on Ravelry. Probably I find it on Ravelry. I'm going to show you now on the screen. I'm going to show you now the name of it because that's also a good note for me to know for the future. So anyway, I was told that that actual piece was knitted with just two and it was kind of a little bit boxy looking, shorter. So I was told, well, I have a feeling that I'll be fine with just three. And I love kind of knitting things with just three skeins, don't you? How many skeins do you have to knit uh, to knit a garment for yourself? because that was a quite interesting topping we have with one of the ladies who said that she's going to look up at my channel. So hello, it was really nice to be a paired with you. Uh, so this is um, the yarn I got, actually, I haven't showed you and I'm going to knit a garment with it. Anyway, so I decided on that. But like I said, there was another book that I was really drawn to because the blend was quite interesting. I knitted my lovely shawl design, finger cost, with a mixture of a 100% British wool and there's a three breed in it. But that particular booth had a skein with one of each. So we have Masham, oh, I don't know the names of it now from the top of my head. But there was obviously it's the BFL, so Blue Face Lester, Lester. Uh, but there's other two uh, names of it that kind of pop up. And when I touch it, I was quite surprised. Wow, this is 100% wool. Unless it's a breed going into Merino, it could have been the same feeling, if you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I was tempted, but uh, I was drawn towards one color, but it was just one skein. I knew it won't be enough for garment. So Martin's Lab, but I leaned to. And also I thought at the end of the day, I was able to touch so many amazing Irish dyers yarn that there's not there's not a big problem for me purchasing online because of the shipping. And Martin's is from Poland, but that's not the only thing I bought. After first round and I eventually got the yarn and I was so happy with it. And you could actually see also that in that section when we could sit, I didn't want to, you know, record anyone's faces. You could see there was a station that you could uh, wind your yarn. There wasn't any information, so I wasn't sure can you do it or you can do it. So the information over there would be you know, if you have a yarn that you want to cake, feel free to do so, or something like this. So I decided to sit and I sat with another amazing lady that I could have a chat with. So I was feeling not on my own and we were chatting about the yarn we got, we were chatting at the booths about the yarns that uh, we knitted, that they're actually in this room. That was really nice. And then we decided to go for another round on our own. And during that round, I was just browsing through and see if I can purchase something else than just a garment. I decided that I wanted to buy, to have maybe a tradition to buy a one skein of yarn or hat for myself and for Sebastian because that was in Edinburgh. I got a skein for him. I'll definitely <laughs> need a hat from one of the skeins that I got and like they're still there. I decided to walk around and during that time I met Laura from Wooly Wolverine. <laughs> I always don't know how to say it. Uh, Laura has an amazing podcast. She's an Irish girl who has a podcast. So check it out. I'm going to leave the link down below. A podcast a person in the flesh coming in for a event to uh, enjoy yarn and uh, meet people. We decided just for a bit to hang out together and just walk around the booths and look for some yarn. And we ended up in this little thing. You're going to see what I got. But before that, I had a 
a sneak peek of the footage of the yarn in the booth so it's over here and as you can see how amazing the colors are is just drawing on those you know uh, Disney or Pixar movies just hats popping up from those uh, amazing gradients I decided to spoil myself and get a skein for my hat and this is what I got look at it how beautiful it is so what do we have over here? We have 100% merino wool, 400 meters, 100 grams. So it is a fingering. It is machine washable, gentle cycle. So it is super wash. It's kind of hard to say. It is or it isn't. It doesn't say super wash merino, but it says that you can put it into a gentle cycle. Hand dyed in Hungary. And this kind of is my also cold a yarn trip. <laughs> One of a kind. Handle with care, dry flat. So it's another information. You can see over here, there, there were different blends and different names. It's just something that price weight and range wise, I was able to go for it. And I love the color. What I like about it, you can also have information, I think when it was dyed to see it. Amazing. Bilum or Bilum. That's how we say. And the color at this. So I'll be pulling from the center, getting amazing ribbing and then mixing those two colors together. Yarn Festival hat. So what do you think? Is that my colors? And I've never got anything in that form. That's one thing. I never got anything in Hungary. And I just had at least four or skin that I could grab and take. Although I said to the lady who was amazing in the booth that I could probably grab half of it. She said she would not like. <laughs> it's just if I could afford. But anyway, it was nicely packed, put it in the bag, and um, I'm going to have a hat. Before my class, I couldn't resist and um, I went to another book, one of many, and I just wanted to support someone local to me and wish luck and I was able to leave my shawl, which I knitted, and on the screen you can see what the shawl I'm talking about so you know what the dyer uh, behind that yarn is. It's Grace for, from Bubble Yarns, so this is it, and I decided to go with this amazing skein um, because Except need a hat too. And here it is. So this time I have a colorway. So I left my shawl. So Lily, if you're watching, your lovely design, which is called Frozen Shawl. Grace has it. <laughs> so anyway, we have Bubbles Yarns, Yarn Base Marina Sock. We have over here Colorway Dawn. I need to ask what this means. It's like a name. It's actually a word. 100 gram Hank, approximately 400 meters. And materials used is 70 breath. 75% superwash merino, mulsing free, and 25% nylon. I was interested in what that word means. I haven't Googled it yet. But according to Grace, she puts that because she's very aware of the way uh, sheep are, how the wool is cut from their bodies. <laughs> the way the wool is cut it can hurt an animal or it hurts animal and that only states that um, it wasn't cut that way that animal is fine but yeah if i find something on wiki i'll put a link down below too because i'm interested what that is this is done there were four skeins but this one was the darkest so i went for it because i really love it yay and i got a pin <sighs> i got a pin too i put it into my uh oh wallet which is somewhere in the kitchen uh, but uh, the pin looks exactly the same way as um, this logo yeah if you never met Grace check her podcast check her yarn so right so this is this is another skin that I got nice chocolate color so now but that wasn't the end of my journey of my wool in a journey and I took a part in the class always wanted to do that and I was encouraged by my husband by my friends and I eventually decided to go as you may know I'm a self-learned knitter my story is that my mom knows how to knit she might have tried to teach me but I basically just slammed the door and on my own on the floor just figure out what to do to get some some stitches <laughs> and during the process now of knitting for the last three years i found different now i'm going to mix it not styles but methods of knitting by looking at the fabric i'm getting and noticing a few things here and there just say maybe i've been mixing terms but that's how self 
soft people do. So anyway, I was very eager to join the class, uh, not only to learn things, but also spend some time with Justyna Lorkowska, amazing Polish designer. You can check her, I will put links down below to her amazing designs. I loved every minute of it. <laughs> there was, I think, 15 of us overall. We were sharing, we were measuring our bodies, we were taking photos of ourselves just to see our shapes and stuff and measure everything. So, so much fun. Not only uh, we had a lovely chat, but you, we received during that class amazing pattern. And this is actually, I can show you. This is Justina. And I can show you that much because it's not really written pattern. Um, so we got a pattern and then we got 12 pages, maybe six pages front and back information about the class. Here it is, knit to fit. So if you're interested to take part in it, go for it. It's so worth it. It's, um, it's a class Maybe description wasn't so, maybe it was, but it's only relates to garments. So uh, Yusuna will tell you things about the tools, about swatches, about your body shape, about your measuring, uh, about shaping certain patterns to your own structure. Uh, then taking your measurements and grabbing a random, well, we didn't have random, we had a pattern and each of us had to state what size do we think after the lesson we could knit. And she was saying, yes, you're taking this for consideration, you're taking this for consideration, and this for consideration, yes, you're right, or, well, you should also take this, because if you look at the pattern, there's certain things um, you may spot too. Um, is it like stock net stitch? Do you have lace? Do you have cables? And how those uh, elements in the designs behave in regards to structuring things. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, I had a blast. It was really fun and it was so quick though, <laughs> I would say. Well, anyway, we were slightly disturbed by planes. The, the Wuhan event is situated exactly next to an airport and it was loud. And from time to time, the planes were flying and you had to wait like literally eight seconds to be able to say anything that someone can actually hear you. You couldn't raise your voice to go over the sound because it was so loud. So that was only one thing I would say, but you know, if you're with Justina, if you're with a designer who has a, such big passion about knitting and um, garments and what fits you or what's not, uh, you don't mind. So anyway, if I will have a pleasure to uh, book a place for any of Justina's uh, classes, count me on it. Sign me for it. <laughs> Definitely will go uh, and recommend to anyone. She's amazing. That was that. I can't share you more what the class was about because, you know, obviously it's like a design. She put a loads of effort and heart and this piece of paper is amazing. I haven't read it through, but there is more into it that she just basically, um, what you call it, and just scratch the iceberg, I think, and more details are there, all the maths and stuff. So I can't wait to dig into it. Yeah. So when I finished class, I went for another kind of quick walk um, to the booths. I said um, bye to James and Grace and I took off. We went back, we nearly have Ikea so I could eat <laughs> something and uh, we came back home, had a quick walk and I'm here with you. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this kind of quick recap. Is that a recap? Is that the words I should use anyway of uh, this event? I really enjoyed it. Everything was spot on. I don't have any um, comparing to Edinburgh. It was slightly smaller, but everything was ticked, I would say. There was a sitting area, there was food you can get, amazing people, amazing dyers. What else you can say? Maybe not enough money in my pocket. <laughs> right, so I hope you enjoyed this one. See you next one. If you want to go to any yarn events, go, please go. They're amazing people. Even if you don't know, just say hi, just compliment someone, garment, anything, the yarn, ask the yarn they buy, and you will start to have a conversation with someone. Just saying from my own experience. So I hope you enjoyed this one. See you next one. Bye. And yeah, let me know, have you attended any yarn festivals lately? Till the next one.